episode 206, No Laugh Track Podcast, Acme Comedy Company's official podcast. My name is Justin Severson, the host. Thank you, Circle of Heat, for letting us play your music there at the beginning. Uh, this is a big week. It, it is, it was, it has been. It's a big week at Acme. There was an important meeting on Monday. Two of the people... Two of the comedians that were there are with me right now. Uh, one is headlining this week. The other is uh, complaining about neck pain or back pain or both. I'm fine. Yeah. David Huntsberger's here, and so is Cy Amundsen. Yeah, my neck is doing okay, and I know how it feels to have a bad neck, so I, I feel for you, buddy. Do you? I really do. Yeah. Okay. I've had re- I got uh, in a car accident once that really, really roughed up my neck. Um, last night, some people came over to say, Hey, after the show, and I was sitting at the bar and for whatever reason, they stood, like I turned around kind of opening myself up to, Hey, how's it going? And they kept shifting just further and further to my, to where I was like really craning the hell out of my neck. And finally I asked them like, can you guys move and stand over here? And I was really proud of myself because like <laughs> in the past I would have just sat there and then the next day I'd been like, God, my neck is killing I me. I haven't been listening for two minutes. Could you move please? <laughs> Yeah, not me. I've just walked away from dozens of conversations <laughs> to protect myself in the middle of them. <laughs> you should get a screen print on the back of your shirt that just says, sorry, it's all about my neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my that fa- was kind of rude. That he- oh, it's his neck. Yeah, okay. Okay. My face is over here. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Gentlemen, here yeah. we are. Yeah, in the, uh, wow, what would we call it? The uh, remnants or the visage? <laughs> Of a once great comedy club that <laughs> we're in the lame duck phase of it now to some degree. Yep, we are in the, uh, yeah, lame duck. That was good. I don't have anything better than that. <laughs> what if this was like uh, when Letterman left and the very next day they started uh, tearing the place down? <laughs> I Luckily, I don't Why are there here. no chairs left? <laughs> yeah, and then just hacking out these beams. <laughs> don't need them. <laughs> Turn them into people's dining room tables. That's the best part. Mary Mack talks about that in her act. But you, when you come to this, like people, you see a full room. There's at least three or four like adult men are like, "Geez, look at these fucking beams, man! <laughs> what are you thinking? What kind of tree that come from?" <laughs> like every show, you'll see a guy admiring the beams. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I do every time. I, I can't get over it. But you know, I guess uh, if you look at you know, one, there's a natural change of the world that it's hard for us to accept at any time. Two. If you do look at the sight lines here, these beams take away a lot of viewing angles. So maybe there is a chance that the next place will have some positives that yeah. mm-hmm. people will be able to go like, oh, I, I do like this more. Yeah. I think there's a city ordinance in Coon Rapids against beams. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're pushing you. Coon Rapids, huh? Well, never. No, I just, okay. It's just one of the ones that I've guessed. <laughs> so we should, uh, let, let, let's uh, set this, the scene here. To the, today's Wednesday, Monday, 4.30, downtown. I think it was the first time, at least for me, for sure, uh, that I had attended a city zoning meeting yeah. uh, with city council members. I brought my kids mm-hmm. because uh, that was the day I have them yep. <laughs> for the divorce. And I wanted to attend, and I had nowhere for them to go. So they got well, to I witness it them. as well. On the screen, you know, they show like you're looking at yourselves basically in the room, yeah, and it's being broadcast somewhere. It's just some poor, poor, lonely person's laptop or public yeah. access feed television. Yeah, some just then, old man who's like, "Shut the <laughs> hell up, Sharon! I'm watching the zoning commission." <laughs> the one guy who watches, and you're, I could see your daughters like whispering in each other's ear from time to time. They're being very polite. They're they being were respectful. They, they were being loud. Yes, they they're being very polite. I. I treated them to McDonald's on the way oh, home. Oh, that was a big, yep. that's a big And carrot. I let them eat in the backseat of the car, oh. which I don't always do. So, yeah. yeah I, I, so they earned it. I uh, rewarded them as best I could. But I, and it, and that's the thing. When they were whispering to each other, I think it was, why are we leaving? I'm starving. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But yeah. Chell Bjorgen got a lot of FaceTime. <laughs> a lot <laughs> of FaceTime. It was a 50-50 deal on who would sit in that seat because... Tommy sat down first, and then Chell and I sort of looked at each other, and he just happened to be a half step ahead of me. Mm-hmm. And I'm real thankful that he got that spot. Yeah. Because I was blocked out by the people talking. You couldn't see me. Couldn't see Dave. But I was watching that screen just... I started laughing out loud a couple times and really had to stifle myself because he wasn't aware of the face he was making. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just terrific. He looked like he was melting half of the time. <laughs> <laughs> because people rarely sit with their... 
neck so straight. Yeah, I don't understand it. <laughs> it did not look like he was relaxed and or engaged. It just looked like he was sort of a statue. Like there may have been a slice taken out of his neck, and it was had to support itself <laughs> by a missing... It, or he was yeah. duct taped to the head of the chair. <laughs> Yeah. I was very impressed by uh, how many comedians uh, showed up, you know, especially. I really wasn't. Well, they don't have jobs. I was underwhelmed. Yeah. I mean, there's 200 comedians that sign up for the open mic. So I'd like to say uh, into the microphone that I was disappointed in how many people showed up. Really? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean. We can come at it from different angles. Sure. David Huntsberger was there who doesn't live in the States. Well, I mean. That was impressive. It's not like he traveled here just for that. (laughs) (laughs) I did. I I got up early and hustled out of Madison so I could make it. I was trying to get to that pre-meeting, but I didn't find out about that until early in the day. But uh, yeah, I, I the, this the timing worked out to be to make it to that. But yeah. I did think it was going to be like the entire open mic scene. Okay, yeah. real. I honestly, real. I thought there would have been a heavier weight on that room had there been the hundred and fifty to two hundred people that I think could have showed up oh. and just packed the hallway and room. Okay, yeah. but also, you know, that's why they hold those meetings at those times because four thirty. On a Monday it's a is shit not time. a convenient time. No. Yeah. yeah, for I mean, yeah, you're right. For working comedians, it definitely yeah. is. For people that are like, you know, do, working job. a day job and then trying to hustle the open yeah. mic. I, you know, it, it did feel because so few people were there in in respect to like the population of the city, let alone like the open mic scene. That like, oh, we are just a t-ball team and they're taking our field, but this really doesn't matter as much as maybe we think it does to the rest of the city. That's yeah. how that felt to me. I don't mm-hmm. know if that's true or not, but I was just like, that's what the, oh, the this turnout makes was. it seem like they, they can live without it. It's just we care so much about it and just assume that everyone else does, but maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. Had you guys ever gone to anything like that and got involved in no, any I step of No, I am not a nerd of that no. level. No, yeah, thank no. you. Yeah, I've, this is thing about like causes that generally I stick pretty far away from. Yeah, I and which is a shame because when you're in that scenario, like boy, those petitions signatures are nice. But it would be great if we had three to five hundred more people here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And every single day, you are one of the people missing from someone else's. Someone cause, else's just, cause. Yeah, that's that, that's very true. I, uh, it was later that day on Monday that uh, <laughs> I'm going to read your your own quote from Twitter, David Huntsberger. <laughs> The Minneapolis yeah. City Council is the biggest bunch of cowards I have ever witnessed. Yeah. Do you stand by that comment, sir? Do you yeah, stand by yeah. that, David? I, yeah, I do. Because I, namely, Commissioner Brown, the guy who was the lead guy, yeah. he spoke with that kind of like his bottom lip was kind of locked to his teeth, which is fine if you speak like that. I don't mean to say speak negatively toward that style of speaking, but you can't be a leader and speak like that. No starting quarterbacks talk like that. No CEOs talk like that. You've got to project. When Andy stood up and asked him, if we can't affect change here, where can we? Yeah. And he sheepishly looked down to the side and went, um, let, let's just stop talking. The, 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 the public speaking the part, public is, part over. is over. It's concluded. I thought that is who you are. You're a coward. And everyone else around you whispering to each other and never saying, hey, this is how we feel. This sucks for you guys, but this is what we're going to do. They tried to, in their own kind of cowardly ways, absolve themselves. Uh, and I respected the guy who left early, which in itself was a very cowardly thing to do. Like that you was can, weird. You can stay until the vote is happening. That's very convenient because you yeah. didn't mention that at the beginning of this meeting. Hey, no. I have to go at six fifteen. You just suddenly were leaving then. So on and on down the line. And when they would ask, like, to put a motion forward, they were silence. It was silence, and then one of them would go. I, I guess I'll do it. And I think the reason for that is down the road, If when they inevitably run for a new position, they'll say, he was the one that brought condos to the North Loop because yeah. he proposed this initiative. Like, yeah. that goes on his record. But hopefully, the, the whoever's running opposed to that person will say, that initiative also meant the, losing Acme down there. Mm-hmm. And I hope that guy gets trounced. So I just kept thinking on and on who those people were with – you know, staying home and writing their college essays on a Friday night and never actually belonging to a group of friends and, uh, you know, doing community service so that it would look good on their application, but not actually caring about yeah. They were those sort of people to me. And yeah. so I just thought the way they respond, if one of them had just at the meeting said, uh, hey, I know we keep saying our hands are tied. I know we keep saying even if we do this, we don't have the authority to really affect this. 
I don't care. I said that I would work for you or fight for yes. you, and I care about what you're saying. Yes. I don't want your Little League field to get torn down. I don't want Acme to go away. I'm voting no, even if it means me losing this seat. If yeah. just one person had done that, I think we would have all been like, that was an okay day. Like, when, someone showed some backbone. But yeah, unanimous was a word that I, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's... On everything. Rough. The one building, the guy's like, they're flooding our building. Oh, sorry, nothing we could do. Unanimously voted to just ignore him. Oh, they were like, well, I assume that when the ground <laughs> settles. Yeah. What? I haven't looked at it. I am an architect. You'll be fine. Yeah. Because, like, it's flooded our building twice, a historic building that we <laughs> care about. Hey, they're going to put in this drive through that is going to violently endanger bikers. Well, nothing we can do. Yeah. Unanimously approved yeah. to do that. It's just on and on where I was like, oh, they don't care. And th- there's not one among them that would. I thought that biker guy might kind of be. I thought he would be a guy that was like. This is garbage. This is ridiculous. Acme is an institution. The member that was in the far right. Yeah. Beginning, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, didn't it feel almost like a, uh, um, when, when it ended, it felt like maybe like going on a date where mm-hmm. it goes really well. And then at the end, the girl's like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go home alone and I'm never going to talk to you again. And the it felt like at the you end, never she, stood a chance. No, ex- it did feel a lot. It felt like at the end of the night, she went... I, my boyfriend is going to be so glad that I did this. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you're like, I, can't, I don't even know how to react. I don't, I'm not like furious. I'm befuddled. I should have seen this coming, I guess. Yeah. I, there are all those emotions there just because no one really stood up and went, this is horseshit. And I thought Acme comported themselves really well. But I also wish we'd raised a little bit more of a stink. Well, I think that, and that was something we, we talked about here in the pre meeting. And I, I like for how hard everybody's gone at everybody on Twitter. And the problem is, like, I think, and, uh, you know, Fry, the Frey, whatever the hell his name is, he, he had said, you know, he'd, he'd received some emails because I was talking to him in the hallway that were pretty nasty and some stuff that was pretty nasty. He's the uh, uh, Ward 3 or whatever yeah, represents yeah, yeah. this neighborhood yeah. that, where Acme is. And uh, I'd, uh, you know, I'd say the, the thing with the arts community is you often have, you know, like 10% are talented, you know, maybe 20 to 30% are talented and crazy. Mm-hmm. And the rest of them are just crazy. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think, like, there was a lot of people who were good-intentioned but maybe attacking and appro- approaching it in a way that was, you know, you can be mean and shitty and it's detrimental. Yeah. And so I think that was kind of the decision was, like, we're at a point now where I don't know that being shitty or nasty helps anything. You know, like, because you want to look. I think in that your only chance in that situation is to look educated and to look respectful. Because right. if you walk in and you're like, you guys are all fucking cowards, despite the truth in that, I think mm. they go, all right, are you an adult here? Do you actually want to talk to us, or are you just going to yeah. be a little bitch about right. it? You yeah. Know? So I think it's that's kind of a hard, I think, because that's what I, I wanted to go at them pretty hard. But, you know, I think that almost becomes, that gives them an out, is I think what happens. Yeah, but I, I, I just feel like there is a way... To you know, rather than go home like I'm going to give them a piece of my mind digitally, to yeah, be yeah, there yeah. and look them in the eyes and go, stop whispering to the person next to you. Look at me. I'm yeah. speaking to you as a group. Yeah, yeah. You can just sit there and, and know that you were appointed to vote on something, and none of our testimony, so to speak, matters at all. Or you can be an adult and and look at a human being in the face and understand that like yeah, we beyond anything else, we have a leg to stand on. Like Pat's thing about the variance being. You know, kind of ethically compromised because of the financial gains. Mm-hmm. I thought that w- we should just stop there and be like yeah, address I that. Agree. And when they sort of were able to push that aside and then never circle back to it, that's all I was thinking when Andy was standing up and he was like, Let, "Let's stop the public speaking. Let's stop it." I wanted to stand up and be like, "You never answered Pat's thing." Yeah, you know, correct. That's the only thing that was. If you're the people that are only going to respond to factual and like clinical data, and you don't care about our heartfelt testimony. Well, here is one piece that really should throw What do you mean? They gave us the, uh, they threw us a little, well, you know, we've, I just have to say, I've never had a group come in here so organized and well spoken and knowledgeable. Uh, yeah. Well, really, thanks. Turns out it didn't mean anything to you guys, but thanks. Yeah. I mean, and not to liken a group of comedians fighting for a place as immigrants or people who are being 
you know, removed from their communities or or tortured or harmed that somehow with bare feet gather up their children and, and march to a building and cry <laughs> tearfully say, I don't have clean water. I need help. Yeah. These fat cats are driving us out in record numbers. And for that person to go, we really appreciated your testimony. That's just not, it's nothing we can do, sadly. But, you know, good luck finding some food when you get back out there on the streets. That's grab a, like, you know what? Yeah. Grab a sticker on the way out. <laughs> Grab a sticker. Get two for the kids. You brought your kids. Two for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I uh, uh, so I didn't get up to speak. I uh, I thought about it, and they ran out of time, and that was the excuse I told my kids when we left. Yeah. Uh, but both of you did, and I. So we're driving home afterwards, and my <laughs> first of all, my kids asked me. I thought this was really intelligent. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them asked me, "Dad, are, is it? Do you think everybody's more mad or sad?" Oh, oh that's wow. good. And that's I thought intuitive. that was interesting. I said mad. I mm-hmm. think I think initially I think we're all pretty mad about this. Mm-hmm. Um, then they also another observation was how unfair it was. They asked me if uh, I was friends with the girl with pigtails, which mm-hmm. is Andy Erickson. Yeah, and they said how unfair it was that when she asked, like, well, what could we have done? And they just cut her off, like you were saying. And then they she cut, talked again, and the guy just kept he just was going to speak over her. That's, he just kept yeah. going until she stopped. Just a oh. coward wouldn't look her in the eye and say that. Just no. let's and when he. I don't know if you saw his eyes dart around, and he wasn't even looking at the people no. next to him. He was looking at like his own lap, going, "Let's just, let's just stop talking. Let's just, ple-. like that's a person who's never handled a situation. That's fine if you've been bullied and you've worked your way up to this position, but that you still have to become a leader. Yeah. You can't always be that kid that was getting picked on in the lunchroom. At some point, you have to look someone in the eye and say, "I'm sorry, we didn't address that. You cannot talk now, or you'll be removed from this room." And we would have gone, "Whoa, all right, this guy's running things." Yeah, yeah, exactly. Such a coward. Uh, one of the th- one of the other things my one of my daughters pointed out uh, was that one of the speakers said a bad word. Well, not a bad word, but a, wo- a word that we're not supposed to say. <laughs> and that was you, David. <laughs> oh, because hey, I said, hey, yeah. Hey. And <laughs> I, that's right. I said penis. <laughs> <laughs> and to ten and eight and a, to a ten and eight year old girl, yeah. that stands out. Oh, I almost said dick. So I'm glad I. <laughs> I'm glad that I might didn't. have gone over their heads. Ooh, Possibly. okay, good to know. Possibly. Yeah, that would stand out. Like, they know why the was that in a city council? <laughs> <laughs> they had just watched, but uh... Daddy, why do women be shopping? Why did that come up? <laughs> But uh, yeah, that that wasn't a big deal. So, oh, okay. But I I actually thought it was pretty funny that they that that stood out. That wasn't one of the things that stood out to them. Yeah. Someone said a bad word <laughs> that we're not supposed to say. Well, clinically, it's fine. Yeah, sure. Clinically, it's anatomically it's acceptable. Yeah, and people are wondering what we're what what's next. And I'm with uh, Acme and. I trust Lewis. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, yeah. I figure they got it. The they key. got it handled. I'm I'm a believer that I think everybody was pretty mad and disappointed. Uh, I I still am going to remain a believer that, hey, just f- first and foremost, and yeah, Lewis who runs this place. But then, you know, no matter how great their idea for any of this stuff, guns bear and. The, I don't think they actively want to see this place go. I don't think that's a positive thing for anyone. Mm-hmm. And I think they wanted to get what they would get. And I I don't know. I'm just a believer that hopefully their heads will come out of their asses a little bit. And that's just that might just be me being hopeful mm-hmm. because I want it to be that way. I want to stick it to them now. I, I think like if St. Paul's coming up and they have cool like independent baseball and breweries. and they I would have a rather go to a comedy club in a shoe. I'm just going to put that on the record. No one's going to St. Paul. How fucking dare you? That's fine. You want to say that, but ask everyone. Be like, hey, you want to go to St. Paul? They'll be like, nah, I'm good. Like <laughs> St. Paul closes at about 6.45 p.m. Come on, man. Not it's Maybe 7.15 not at anymore, best. Man. And here's the thing. Fine. drive. If you, if you live in Maple Grove or you live out in, in, in a diner, you live out in Minnetonga, and somebody's like, hey, you want to go down to Minneapolis to go to a comedy club? Everybody's like, yeah. And they're like, hey, you want to go out to St. Paul to go to a comedy club? They're like, that's about 15 minutes too far, man. Come on. <laughs> like, I would put it in Maple Grove, man. Put it, put it. I don't want to go to St. Paul. But, the, but it has to leave Minneapolis, right? If the city just didn't go to bat for itself and essentially represented like we don't care about you i think you go stick it to him somewhere else you go we go somewhere and no where- better place to stick it to him than the state capital my city <laughs> yeah. st paul is st paul the capital dude i hate you 
<laughs> no, Worthington is. <laughs> you know it's the Capitol because some old guy is going, It's the Capitol! Quiet down! It's almost my bedtime! <laughs> You're not psyched about the independent baseball, though? In the I stadium? love the Saints. I, went, I was at the Saints game last night. Here's the thing, night, but the Saints have been fact. around forever, uh-huh. and it hadn't made St. Paul better. <laughs> but they got the new stadium. Like, Oh, no. dope. The Wild have been there for how many years now? Uh, 16. And every, 16. I mean, it feels like three. That's how exciting it is. I'm sorry. I'm out on St. Paul. And you can get at me on Twitter, St. Paul. <laughs> I'll be leading that charge. I'm I, am, that. I guess I haven't experienced a ton of St. Paul, but I'm... Upset at Minneapolis. I'm, I'm I'm fine with being upset at Minneapolis, but there's other places that aren't in Minneapolis. If you want, I can take you to St. Paul. It'll take us a week and a half to get there, <laughs> and uh, and you might fall asleep staring at all the cobblestone. But <laughs> we can we can head over. I'll show you around. All right. Oh, you'll just you're just worried you'll get lost. You have to. That's here's all. the thing. It's it's hard. The problem is it's hard to get parking here now at Acme. And if they moved the comedy club to St. Paul, I think that's a horse and buggy community strictly so i think parking again becomes an issue you have to park on the outskirts and have you oh, know somebody haul you in there we have corrals yeah yeah uh zoning in saint paul is different there's a horse corral every two blocks downtown. yep this is the quiet zone and that's the really quiet zone <laughs> i went with when i lived in austin they were very close i mean they, you've been to that club it's like a big cafeteria high ceilings just a big box yeah it's fun though it's still a really great club but we went and looked at another space that was about five miles closer to the you know downtown area to where the university is yeah which was to me so much more exciting like to just lose that fringe you know austin like any other city like you you get out towards the suburbs you start getting in just kind of that foot traffic of hey and as opposed to like your arts community and and the people that you know you ideally want there, um, not exclusively, but you know you get too much of one over the other. And anyway, like looking at a new space, it was exciting. You could Im- immediately envision it and see like here's where the box office would be, here's how things would set up, and it didn't happen. And so like I would love to be a part of with this going around to both the cities yeah. and going to all the locations and really because I think that'd be as much as like everyone's trusting that this will find the right place what if there are five potentially great places mm-hmm. yeah. how do you choose there that's a good problem to have that's and i'm true. sure there'll be open arms i think the thing let's that's compare that to getting engaged guys <laughs> you know you, you you uh you propose to that one woman uh-huh. there but could you, be five other women that you didn't find yet I right guess. guys five. <laughs> right engaged guys right five I, would there's be... like hundreds <laughs> Hundred, there are hundreds of women on the planet. Yeah, <laughs> I don't buy that. Yeah, there's there's a lot. I'm saying there's three dozen. Three dozen, <laughs> three dozen ish. That yeah. sounds about right. If you, I think it's more the equivalent of like if you were somehow at the same time simultaneously dating five women that you were kind of interested in. Okay. And then having to be like, well, I don't want to be a jerk. I'm picking just one. You'd always wonder, like, did I they pick the right one? That's the Bachelor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm all in on the Bachelor right now. <laughs> are you really? They had this guy on there. I don't watch that. Saint show. Paul, I love you, but they. Uh, I trust you over Cy. Okay, you know what? They can't hear you because this is on the internet. <laughs> I want to listen to the radio. It's a podcast. What's a podcast? Is it bedtime yet? Saint Paul. The uh, I distribute cassettes throughout Saint Paul. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they uh, there's this guy on this year. His name was Chad on the Bachelorette. No, no, oh, nope. Boy. We and cannot he, go oh into boy, Bachelor he, recaps. Was, uh, We're having a nice like discussion a, oh about <laughs> cities. <laughs> we cannot tolerate this. Oh no. Can't bear this. I was at I was at Dave's house in January. I came over to Dave's house after coming back from Minneapolis to LA, and our friend Chad was there, and our friend Eric was there, mm-hmm. and uh, Dave's uh, lady Emily was there, and Dougie I think was and there. yeah, and Doug Doug Miller was there, yeah, and. Uh, we were hanging out, and I tried to play uh, a Justin Bieber song, <laughs> uh, and um, "Love Yourself," which I'm a big fan of. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got support from everybody else in the room of being a big fan of. And I have never seen Dave so staunchly upset about like like beeline <laughs> to shut a computer off. Not like, in my home. Yeah, it was really, it home. was really, really fierce. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are certain things in I like everyone has that thing where they go, oh, it'd be great if we were all sharing our ideas and being relatively intellectually stimulating. However, 
I really like this reality show. Yeah. And that's everyone. You go, oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But at certain times, I have to draw a line and be like, not right now <laughs> and not in my home. That's great <laughs> if I'm in your car and you want to play Justin Bieber, but we don't bring those things in here. Then Cy did the best thing <laughs> potentially ever. It was really, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like such an idiot that I let this happen is that we had some pizza and we were kind of hanging out. It felt like a very like middle school party, hanging yep. out, you know, or having a few beers and stuff. We went and threw the football around out in the street, and then he goes, "I forget how it came up." Somebody was somebody made a Top Gun reference. That's all it took. And <laughs> so I goes, "I I, I, I I don't know. I've never seen it." <laughs> and it, and just everything stopped. And huh? was like, "What?" He goes, "I've." I know it's crazy. I've managed to somehow live my entire adult <laughs> life without ever seeing Top Gun. So as quickly as I shut down the Justin Bieber, I was like, bring up the, you know, we got Netflix on the screen. And it's on. So we watched Top Gun and then found, like maybe midway through or so, someone looked and saw you posted on Facebook or Twitter yeah, like, Facebook. this is the best. I just convinced five of my friends that I'd never seen Top Gun before so I could get them to all watch it with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my go-to bits and it never works as well as that like if somebody is making a if somebody's making a reference to a movie that I love that they don't know I love like Cool Runnings everybody knows I love that movie yeah, but if yeah. you make a, a reference to like Tin Cup or Field of Dreams I'm like I've never seen it <laughs> and almost every time somebody's like oh fuck right now Right, like Chad was angry that I hadn't seen it, and it's baffling that he didn't know. I, it's understandable that I wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I would just assume <laughs> that he would know you'd seen Top Gun. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. how? I mean, I just felt ridiculous. <laughs> that, like, oh, of course, it like, must all have the, been so but, entertaining to you to have people get all hyped up, right? Like, it was. Dude, you're gonna not even. It was believe. so fun, and honestly. Extended the night a long way, oh, yeah. so I didn't great. have to go home. It was really a win-win. I win -win. felt like the detective at the end of The Usual Suspect <laughs> who puts it all together. <laughs> and goes, it was right in front of me the whole time. <laughs> ah, damn it. Well, the best part is we were watching it, and I was laying on the floor. And the three of them were sitting up on the couch. And then one of them would go, oh, here comes the part where, like, and they were like, <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah. yo, pay attention, pay attention. <laughs> this is the blank scene. And I was like, oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is ah, that was fun, baby, baby. Yeah, I get down on. My oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, that was a good time. That volleyball scene just makes less and less sense as you get older. I would argue that it makes more and more sense <laughs> as you get older. It's a music video. That was yeah. That was eighties, and it's a music video thrown into a movie. Yeah, yeah. Jeans, I jeans, also think and Val no shirt. Kilmer is the best. Yeah, he's he, terrific. He is the absolute best. It's like. Top, it's like Costner's number one. <laughs> Val Kilmer's this number two. This reminds me of a Simpsons uh, moment where the attorney comes over and goes, Marge, who would you rank higher? Mel Gibson? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tom Cruise. Oh, Your Honor, I find this to be highly irrelevant. I am so convinced of my client's <laughs> guilt or innocence that I feel like I can waste the court's time <laughs> by ranking the super hunks. <laughs> 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 and that's what you you're now went for the bachelor to rank costner's up at the top number one with a bullet all time <laughs> costner mm. and then mm. yeah no it's i mean <laughs> you have somebody that's above costner he was in field of dreams what is and your criteria Tinko being the best just the like, best movie great actor great looking just great. Kevin Super Hunks. Kevin right. Costner. <laughs> Kevin Costner is America. Do you have he, an earliest Costner memory? Um, I mean, I'm a big Field of Dreams fan, but I always love Tin Cup, that part in Tin Cup where he wins the golf match with the garden tools. <laughs> that pretty much, I was he like... cheats his ass off. He picks up the ball, throws it in the air, and then can bat it. You, you can't do that in golf. Okay, it was an agreement of the bet. Don't be an idiot. It was and not. It was you, not it, ever stipulated. He just it, throws it in the tool. Uh, He's okay. lucky to let him play with a shovel and okay. a hoe. Yeah, now Dave, who wants to watch a fucking movie where we have to have an entire scene where the guy's like, all right, well, what is the specific things that I can do with the shovel? Well, you can Tim toss Cup it in the air and hit it. is a great movie. I'm willing to look past that part. Yes. It's just certainly not the best part of the movie. I mean, it's a pretty good part. I mean, we all know the best part is the end where he keeps hitting the ball in the water. I mean, yeah. that's that's yeah. maybe one of the best sports it's moments. very iconic. In, yeah, it's very iconic. You know, it's a good moment, but no one brings up because it's a bad guy winning. 
is I'll outdrive you. And then he turns and hits it down the oh, road. Oh, great moment. Yeah. Great, Classic, great, great, great moment. outthinking. Great just... moment. It's such a good movie. Do you really have any good. Dances with Wolves anecdotes? <laughs> I just love Dances with Wolves. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you without apology, that Waterworld is a great concept. Now, they didn't execute oh, yeah. it well, I read but Waterworld is a great concept. Yeah, I read an article about it a while ago that was really celebrating. Like It was it, it was one of those things where everyone knew how long it was going over per, over budget and over mm-hmm. like its just, like original production length. Yeah. So like th- when you hear that's happening with a movie, the public sentiment is like, oh, it's going to be bad. Yeah. So it already went into it with that. It's going to be bad. Yeah, but I've heard it was yeah a good idea. It's a gr- it's great concept. Have you ever seen that Far Side comic where it's just like <laughs> it's like a buffet table and like three or four people just kind of smattered about? It looks like the end of like a high school reunion or something. And you see one of them saying, there were just too many buffalo. <laughs> and then the banner that's hanging above says annual uh, gathering of people who didn't like dances with wolves. <laughs> <laughs> And I met someone a while ago that didn't like Dances with Wolves. I could not get over it. I could not. I could, I, no, this is impossible. And it's one of those things where, like, Mel Gibson had to deal with that a little bit, too. Like, you, your thing wins everything, but you don't win Best Director. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah you yeah. never get any. He never was nominated as an actor. He's pretty one-dimensional. Yeah. He's, and he, let, me, let me make this argument. Robin Hood? Ugh, that, oh. that accent? Ugh. Let me make an argument. Prince Pro- of Stealing My Money. <laughs> I don't love that joke. Um, <laughs> I don't care. No, everything can't be a home run, okay? Sometimes you hit a double. They can when you just only do baseball movies, which is what you should have done. <laughs> let's, or golf movies where they let you hit let's home runs with the ball. Bull Durham. If, any, if you were in Bull Durham and Field of Dreams, you're the greatest of all time. And then he went on to make Dances with Wolves. And, and for Love Rock. of the Game. And for love, oh, for love of the Game is so good. Mm-hmm. It's no, so good. It's not. Oh, fuck it's off. Pretty good. Fuck Sam off. Raimi? You're an idiot. Yeah, it's, good. it's great. You're, you're wrong. <laughs> you're an idiot. But here's the thing mm-hmm. Costner, amazing actor. Also, an entire career of not being an asshole. Like, you, can you say one bad thing? Think of the stars that exist in Hollywood and have existed for the last 30 years. How many of them can you not say something shitty about? I think when he was married, uh, he hit on my aunt. Okay, well, that's just called being Kevin Costner. He was probably flirting, and your aunt got all wet and was like, well, he hit on me. I'm sorry about the wet thing. It's I guess aunt. when you put it that way. <laughs> Here's the thing. Can I can tell you what. If Kevin Costner came in here right now and sat down next to me, he's like, hey, can I see your phone for a second? got to check something on Google. I'd hand and it to he, him, and he'd be like, thanks, man. He'd walk out of bed. Did you see Kevin Costner hit on me right there? <laughs> Uh, I think he's just got too much charm. He exudes charm. I thought his thing was he was, like, not a notoriously nice guy. I've never heard that. Ooh. Hmm. Ooh. Well, that is not true. Okay, I hope not. He seems nice. I mean, his characters are pretty nice. They're good guys. God. He's also one of these guys who thinks he's a singer. Doesn't he like to play He's music? got a band. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a band. They're not bad. Eh. Can, <laughs> Hold on, I'll bring them up. We're going to back that? I don't think they're bad. What are they called? I'm going to bring Let's up one of their catch. songs. Okay, no. That's a good band name. Let's My dad always talks about how if he had a band, he'd call them the Bone Cutters. Hmm. It's a great dad band name. Yeah. That sounds like the Stone Cutters from The Simpsons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you looking up? Some super hunk uh, facts? Yeah, talk amongst right? yourself. I'm going to pull up Kevin, cut one of his songs. Who's your guy? Do you have a main actor? I don't think I read Right now, for me, it's I... Tom Hardy. Really? He's always muttering so few words. Yeah. <laughs> when the original Bourne movies were coming out, I would say Matt Damon was the guy. That was your guy? Yeah. Big Matt Damon. Do, mm. if you, have you guys seen um, the bootlegger movie that Tom Hardy was in? Oh, hideous. You're a, you're a no. fucking idiot. How are we friends? Lawless? I know that we <laughs> so have... I, Dave and I's friendship is very purely based on Dave being able to overlook the stuff that I love. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is the heart of our relationship. Aww. That is kind of true. It is true. I have to like... every. I guarantee we've never had a conversation... Where I don't mention something I like, and he has to go, ah, he's a good guy. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> and go ahead. Have your moment. <laughs> um, uh, I'll, I'll pull up. Uh, you guys keep talking, but I, Kevin Costner and Modern West, his band's name is Modern West. They have a song called Long Hot Night. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's about the night he's going to meet you. 
Yeah, it is. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Long hot night. Oh, God. Tom Hardy's great, man. He's I like very Lawless. good. I loved uh, uh, Bronson. That was oh, phenomenal. Yeah. He's so good in that. But I, I just feel like since then he's been this kind of brooding, one-dimensional, tough guy. Yeah. You know, still waters kind of thing, and that that gets old. Yeah. I don't like that. I you we don't have to sit here and pretend that Shia LaBeouf isn't a talented actor, right? He's the best. He's the fucking best. Yeah. Did you see Fury? Yeah. He's real oh good in that. He's amazing in Lawless. Yeah, I know you don't like Lawless, but if you separate him yeah, out in Lawless, I thought he was trying too hard. I don't. I don't he know. He had that man. accent. And where are you? Yeah, that what? part was hard to take. Yeah. What do you two artists think about all of his? You know, uh, don't I'm care. riding the elevator. I'm doing a movie marathon with just my movies and sitting in the theater. I like that he's and seems the like late, a, an interesting celebrity. The latest thing was hitchhiking. Well, that was yeah. He went through my girlfriend's town. That was commissioned though by I think University of Boston, their arts department or something like that. It was he was just the person who accepted it. Oh, but that really? was that okay. wasn't his idea. Oh, okay. But yeah, like you know, take me anywhere. You could just drop him off at the top of a mountain and be like, "Good luck, man. Yeah, find you your have next no ride. cell service here." Yeah, which I, that would have been honestly my idea, but it'd be hard. You walk all the way up to the top of a mountain. Like, all right, dude, see ya. I'm going to walk back now. You got to stay here and wait for someone to like get you out of here. But I'll bet people just took him town to town and left him in places where he could easily get picked up, which is to me, not that interesting. Not as interesting. He got dropped off in my girlfriend's hometown, Newcastle, Indiana. That's pretty, I mean, it, I wonder if people in that town, if that's a big deal to them or they don't care. Or... I think it's a big deal to them. That's kind the of part I don't... St. Paul, would be a big deal. Yeah, people would be like, who's that kid? <laughs> why is he here at 8 o'clock p.m.? I can see why people hate it if they think it's like his narcissism and sort of saying like, wouldn't it be so great if people got to chat with a celebrity, let alone me? Yeah. But I, I look at it the other way of like standing in an elevator and just diffusing like we're all just people yeah. and i you recognize my face perhaps but there's nothing that should separate us well, let's just talk like people and i think like it could be one or the other of those things but i i hope it's the latter that he's like you guys ride re- elevators like regular people right no i'm a stair guy oh, okay. um <laughs> i uh, i think like i i think it's always fun to find out that people you know you admire for their accomplishments are good people mm-hmm. but at the same time I, I don't care. Like, I, to me, Shia LaBeouf and the plagiarism and the being a weirdo and the egomaniac and an ass. Like, if you're focused on that stuff, that's a rough life to live to feel that way. It is weird, though, to, like, verbatim steal Daniel Klaus stuff. Yeah. I mean, and just yeah, I know, I don't, I, like I said, it doesn't really... make me, like, I often think, I, there's, I certainly would not want to be friends with the man, but he is so incredible to watch. On screen, there's this. He did this Disney movie when he was a kid called "The Greatest Game Ever Played." Yeah, it's it's so good. He's like he's good I watched holes. it on a plane and I just <laughs> weeped. His little caddy guy. Holy shit, <laughs> that movie is so. And he's incredible. Roll it and hold it. He was good. This is he was good on a TV show called Even Stevens, like on a Disney TV show as a kid. Brooks Robinson. You know his start. He started in stand up when he was like fifteen, and he would call like APA and CAA and go, "Hey, have you heard about this kid LaBeouf? You gotta go see this kid LaBeouf." And like, of course, if you're really? yeah, he wow. he drum. He was living in a like I think the studio apartment with his mother, and was just like, "Screw this, I'm getting out of here," yeah. and just figured it out. And he's good in holes, and yeah, like. What were you going to say about even Stevens? No, Brooks. Brooks Robinson used to say it. He would like, and this was long before. This was like right around the time holes came out. Is like somehow one night we were talking about, it and even Stevens came up. Two young adult men were talking about <laughs> even Stevens. Disney show. And and he was like, that kid has unbelievable timing. And he's right. Like on that show, you'd watch it. Like you're not supposed to be that good on a Disney show. Mm-hmm. Like he's really good. I'm telling you, he's he's I. He was able to be good in Transformer movies. He's been good in everything he's been in. Disturbia. He's just he's just a really really good actor whether what he's in is good or not. I like him. And I, I but I feel like it's weird to have to defend someone on that level. Like people said that about Robin Williams. Like, dude, he stole jokes. How can you as a comic look mm. past that? And you mm-hmm. go, "Yeah, it is weird, but man, when you I'd trade some of those jokes for him in Dead Poet Society. Dude, I would, you know, and he's this scene in Goodwill Hunting that they shot all in one take of him on like when once you start being terrible at acting like you and I are, <laughs> and you, you're on one set, and then you watch how they edit a scene together. Yeah. And like, oh, they took eleven they took different takes. takes. Yeah, and in that scene where they never leave him and just put like you're like, you could probably quote me, but you could you haven't been in the Sistine Chapel. Yes, you, yes, that yeah, that's it's that's like, like you're like two oh, minutes long of just him. He can walk up on stage, steal a joke out of my pocket, and do it, and I'm still <laughs> gonna think he's amazing. Yeah, 
Yeah. The birdcage. There are scenes like where entire acts are are predicated on his just facial yeah. looks. Yeah. Like yeah. we're like, oh, we need to convey that he's having a hard time deciding if you know what to do here for his son and should we have exposition and him talking about it? No, let's just have him look into a drink at the bar and yeah. you'll get everything you need there. Yeah. And that he's just so good. Yeah. So unbelievably good. And I think Shia LaBeouf is not at that level. No, no, no. But he's so young still. He's I like mean, younger than us. But those Disney yeah. people, man, they go crazy. Oh yeah. And I, I don't know about the longevity, you know? Dude, you I've just, been on lots where they like have like hey, we that pilot a long time, we auditioned kids. Like they mm-hmm. were they were like fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, but even that was weird. Yeah. And then on that same lot, they film a bunch of those Disney shows and you see these kids who are auditioning with their parents coming along and you see the kids who are on the show and you're like, Ugh, that's a tough Yeah. That's a tough haul, man. Mm-hmm. That's I can't imagine. Have you either of you guys done any uh, acting stuff recently? Yeah, I'm gonna be in uh uh the Tig's Amazon show. It comes out, I think, in the fall. It's called One Mississippi. So mm-hmm. I do, like, a couple little cameos. I think I'm in two episodes. But, uh, yeah, that's, like, the, really the first true acting I've done where going to make... I mean, I last year I did a show where we did, like, little sketches and bits and things the like sci-fi that. sci-fi show? Yeah, yeah, the sci-fi show. And then, But that, that wasn't the same as, like, auditioning and going in and being like, oh, I'm playing the role of so-and-so. Yeah. Oh, hey, everybody. And that was fun. I'd never really done that before, and I liked it. It is fun. Yeah, I've cool. only done it. I've only done it. A couple times, but I it, saw your scene in the tennis movie. Yeah, medium, huh? No, that's good. I mean, that's I, if there were more scenes, I didn't watch. I only watched the beginning, and then I thought this seems like a character they're not going to bring back right away. Yeah, 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 <laughs> what, yeah. yeah, yeah what yeah. is it? I don't know what it is. Um, I was in a, a movie, a uh, tennis movie called Breakpoint. Um, you no, do not touch that title. You don't take those two words. You don't rearrange them. You yeah. don't remake it. Yeah. You just leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. We're all thinking it. <laughs> Leave it where it sits. Um, and no, it was amazing. The people who made the movie was amazing. If anything, like it was the first thing I'd ever actually acted in, mm-hmm. and it's weird. It's a weird, like it's nerve wracking. It's and like I struggled with a scene early. And what was your character? What did your I would, character I do? Played. Uh, so it's a tennis movie about two brothers who unite to make a run at like the the qualifier for the open. And it's had like Jeremy Sisto and David Walton and stuff. And they okay. they were incredible. I was like the guy who was Sisto's partner before Sisto fucked everything up. And then like was kind of like the young hotshot tour guy okay. type bullshit. But yeah, everybody on it was incredible. Watching J.K. Simmons act, I was just like, well, okay. <laughs> just keep doing this. This wow. is really great. Yeah, it was really. But I was, I, I almost like, I wanted to do it I was like, I'll do better next time if you guys want to use me again. That was, because it's like, it's a weird self-conscious thing you know i it was it was pretty bizarre the Where first time I've, I've calmed down on that stuff a lot since my part was so it was pretty small yeah. and having done the show last year that i wrote and produced and like yeah, yeah. you know when we'd have people come in we're rooting for them to do well so yes. nerves are like the worst thing i could bring in with them yes like we have you for the part we like you just do it and when so when they would stumble or stutter be like it's okay it's all right but have fun. This is supposed to be fun. And then yeah. w- once it was fun, it was great. So I like going into this thing. I just thought, like, well, I'm going in with a, fr- you know, I'm going to act op- opposite her. Yeah. So and then I just was. I tried to be as loose as possible. Who knows if that resulted in anything good? But I had fun and I didn't feel nervous. And I really did feel like oh, I think this is how this character would talk. Yeah. yeah I guess yeah, yeah. it. I've never seen anything on the other side. You're like, oh god, I'm bad. Yeah, you know, all these weird ticks and stuff. <laughs> the guy who directed that movie, his name was Jay Harris, and he was incredible. That's like he was. He did that exact same thing. Where like you felt like, despite being in my own head, you felt like he was like, oh no, we, I want you here, man. You just do what you do. This is mm-hmm. what you're supposed to be. Is that's and that's a an, an incredible. Kind where of feel. where yeah. can people see that movie? Um, it's on uh, iTunes. It's on Amazon. And Amazon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Amazon. It's on Prime. a couple different places. Yeah. Right, right on. It's good. A lot of it was like, I think I was so nervous about the acting. Like everybody who was involved in it was like the fucking best. I didn't like the one, the guy that has a beer after your match in the opening scene. Sisto? I, I like, yeah, he's normally a pretty good actor, but I just didn't like that character. I think that's been done to death. The kind of the rebel character? The kind of like, yeah, I don't give a shit kind of a guy. Like, yeah. It'll all work out. Hey, I'm fun and, you know, kind of quirky and 
Yeah. That just to me has been done over and over. I mean, I guess I, I sat there because w- there was a lot of tennis action scenes. So I was there for acting for just a couple days and there for tennis, like a fuck ton of days. Yeah. And just watching him, he's really good. Like, and so I think, yeah, maybe character wise, mm-hmm. but like he, I thought he was, he's just really fucking good. But he's, he's a, he was a kid actor. Did you see know? White Squall? Uh, uh uh-uh. uh. <sighs> He's real good in that. And Jeff Bridges is phenomenal. It's yeah. it's very Dead Poets Society. It's really? about these kids that go on a sailing trip that is also like school. And Jeff Daniels is like the teacher. The, he runs it. And then they hoist the mast. And yeah, White Squall is really good. And, and it's I one of those that. movies like almost no one has seen. And every right. like Ryan Phillippe and one of the kids that was on Party of Five and just a bunch of faces. Where People like, who became everyone, super they, famous. Yeah, yeah, they all, everyone out of that went on to have pretty good careers. Yeah. So when you do uh, voiceover work, you didn't, that's, you don't consider that acting? So. Uh, it's a little different. It's this, it's, I don't know. It's different. Cause you're just reading lines, you know, where I, that's, you don't have anything to react to. It's just like, you know, kind yeah. of do you have off. any more of that stuff? That um, recorded? There's a family guy episode coming out at some point. I'm not great at, <laughs> like for a while, I was like I kept checking. I was like, I wonder when that's coming out, and then I just stopped checking because I'm a child. <laughs> and you've done uh, American Dad, yeah, American right? Dad, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Dave does. Don't you feel that way? Because you do a lot of the animation stuff, like where it's just it's not you're not you don't when you record animation stuff you don't. It's not like you and me having a conversation. Like yeah. you just record all your lines, and then you record all my lines, and then you just slide them in. So it's almost a yeah. different beast. Well, I do a lot. I mean. Other than independently made stuff, I just I do a lot of auditions for voice stuff. Yeah. So you just try to give like three or four options that yeah. you think they might enjoy. Like, yeah. hey, I'm gonna go over there and see what they're all about. Hey, I'm gonna go over there and see what they're all about. And then yeah, like, yeah. maybe one of those. Like, yeah, yeah. One. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll choose one of these. Yeah. yeah. And you just, it's all about inflections. And I think that's why Matthew Perry gained success is probably you get so used to auditioning and realizing like. I look like a lot of other people, and I sound like them. I'm going to say, could you be any weirder? I'm just yeah. going to really hammer that B. No yeah. one else is probably doing that. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. my thing. Yeah, you just mm-hmm. suddenly stand out because you chose to say, like, could you be any weirder? <laughs> I hope that works. <laughs> I hope that goes great. It's like a catchphrase. Yeah. yeah. It be- and it becomes so synonymous with you of, like, that's that's, that's it. That's that like, guy, yeah. Yeah, no one else did that. Yeah, yeah. What uh, let, we should uh, mention your podcast that you host? Yeah, Space Cave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Professor Blastoff ended uh, about a year ago, and then I quietly just sort of put one out in the world that I don't really publicize much. I, if people ask me about it, I go, oh, yeah, I have a new one, or you know, I'll. I just kind of like it being out there, and people look find it on their own. But it's 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 kind of an extension of what I did on Professor Blastoff, which is. It's just more conversational. It's it's less improv-y, and, and and it's just more like I'll. It's broken up into a few segments, like the beginning five or ten minutes. I'll call a stranger from Twitter and just kind of see what they're up to, which I think is fascinating to just you know find out so many of these characters around the world what they're interested in, and then I'll I'll sit down with like a physicist or chemist or something like that and just find out what they know, and we have some beers and just kind of chat very very casually, and then I play a little music at the end, and that's it. So it's like an hour and. Uh, each guest gets two weeks, so it makes it a lot easier for me recording. Like sure. Really just doing oh, yeah. So that's just pure laziness there. Of <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> but I like it. It's, it's good uh, planning. Yeah, yeah. It, it just I wouldn't be able to keep, keep up with it otherwise, and uh, it's been fun. I, I, I like doing it. And I was looking at it uh, online, and I saw that, yeah, that you mentioned the beer. Mm-hmm. There seems to be a different uh, who who gets to choose yeah. the beer for the. Events. A lot of times they bring them. Other times, like I'll just go to a liquor store and I'll ask them, like, what kind of beer do you like? And they'll say, you know, I like stouts or I like blondes or one guy liked sour beers, which are really expensive. So when people like those, I'm always like, damn it. <laughs> uh, but I'll just go get something for it. The, the guy that was on two episodes ago, we did it for both of his episodes. Or I guess it was you know ten days ago, or whenever that came out. Brought mead. You uh-huh. ever had mead? Yeah. Only because I go to the Renaissance Fair sometimes. <laughs> oh, dude, I would go to the Renaissance Fair just for the the meat. It's so good. Oh, you liked it? I really liked it. Yeah, it was like the sweet kind of. Seems like it should be thick like molasses. It kind of has that smell, but it's really. It was just so different. It's like not really wine or beer or. Yeah. So yeah, like getting exposed to all those things has been pretty cool. I'm not that big of a beer 
aficionado. I keep like not retaining all the information about all the different <laughs> times. So every every episode's like a new like. So what what makes this one this way? And I'm like Jesus, dude, you've, <laughs> you've learned this a number of times. But where um, are you finding your brainy guests for that show? Some of them reach out to me. Um, you know, some of them are have either been fans of Professor Blastoff, or they heard about it through a friend, or this woman named Kim Bowman who works at Caltech was like, Hey, man, I'm a fan. I want to help this happen. And so she put me in touch with like a handful of Caltech people. And then a friend of mine knew someone that worked at the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena. And so they just kind of keep coming around that way where just randomly run into people or, you know, if it gets down to it or I'm like, damn, I haven't had this type of person on in a while. I'll, I'll maybe get to a point where I'll like reach out, but I haven't had to do that yet. I haven't had to like just blindly cold call people. And, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Self-sustaining. Yeah, yeah, which is way better. I mean, the couple times that I've tried where I saw, like, an article online and it was like, contact this person. And I went, hey, you know, would you want to do this? Don't really hear back. And I feel like, that's fair. Why would they just go randomly do this? Right. I, the Andy Weir, who wrote The Martian, I reached out to him and was like, hey, man, I, I love that book and I want to talk about. He was like, I, he just thought it would be an interview. And I don't think he thought it would be, like, us having beers and stuff. So I was kind of <laughs> disappointed by that. Like, damn, he thinks I'm just, like, the press. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've tried to just steer away from doing that, like to reach out. I just can't take it. Can't take the rejection. <laughs> <laughs> and it's once a week you put one out? Yep, it comes out every Monday. And it's just got like this nice, quiet little following. You can We all kind of get to know each other because of the people that like I chat with at the beginning, you know, or at least to some degree. So that's been, that's been fun. It's cool. How about, uh, and I think we talked about this, I mean, it's been like almost two years since you were on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, well, last summer you were busy with, yeah. a, with a uh, TV gig. Yeah, we were like right in the the throes of production. Then. But I want to. Uh, you did the you did Kickstarter for your. Yeah, yeah. I have those DVDs here with me this week. You do, uh, okay. which is such a weird thing to make. Like I made a laser disc. You can get it. <laughs> uh, but I, it, it's the only way or, or the only medium that could support what I made. Like I made. A stand-up special that my girlfriend and I would travel around, and I had a bunch of animators who volunteered and did animation for my bits. And then she had uh, this DJ so like equipment and software that she was able to like mix the stuff together behind me. So we did it in front of like movie screens and projection screens. So the idea was that like sort of like a Pink Floyd concert or something that like this yeah. imagery sort of synced up to what I was saying. So she would have to slow it down and speed it up sometimes with this little mixer. And then, so we filmed a version of that, and then there are two versions. So, th so like, oh, okay, yeah, we reached our goal on Kickstarter and like flew a bunch of the animators down to Austin, and they play characters within. It's almost like a short film. Like, I play a character who's a comedian, and um, you're in a jumpsuit. I'm in a jumpsuit. I haven't watched the whole thing. I just saw yeah, so I'm in a jumpsuit, and there are people in like big paper mache heads, and it's just very like kind of Pee Wee's Playhouse, kind of funky, yeah. weird. I just wanted to invite and involve as many artistic people as possible to like collaborate and i didn't give them any notes other than just like this is kind of a parameter but you can make and create whatever you want and that was really fun so then so then that's what we did we just you know kind of had like purely uninfluenced you know creative stuff yeah. you know a few notes here and there like well this should be this or the main one was like, oh, it's too literal. Like, it should not be literal to my joke. You right. Know? So right, it's right, right. most of it stays pretty abstract and kind of, like, it does seem like you're seeing, I don't know, just trippy imagery that could, like, exist in your head or whatever. So, like, there's there are two versions, and that's why it's a DVD. I otherwise would never have made a DVD. Oh, but okay. But, I, you know, it has one version that's, like, what would be, like, the produced thing where we had cameras and a whole production crew and editing and lighting and sound and all that and then the other one is just you just see all the animations and then you hear my voice under it that's okay. really the one i prefer it's just very it's very pleasant to watch it you know like stand up when you just listen to an album is nice stand up when you watch a special to me i feel like i don't need to be seeing this i can not necessarily i can no. look away and i'm not missing anything right. but to have animation that just kind of like pulls your eyes and gives you something pleasant visually i I liked that. So that was the idea is like to try and just to s explore that a little. Are you working on any? I know you're very skilled in that type of stuff yourself. On any animation? Yeah. Um, yeah, probably. I always have ideas. I don't know if I've committed lately to uh, to working on anything. Um, what am I doing? I'm sure I have some sort of animation thing going. <laughs> That I uh, I want to start making uh, little animatics on my own, you know, which is like a sample of what the animation would be. So when I when I get some time, I'll sit down and do that. Yeah, 
I do I do this monthly show in LA where I do I screen print a pro, a poster for it every month, but each poster is a still of an animation. So meaning like I'll take photographs of them and then at the end of every year I'll play them. So it's only like 12 frames so it just goes oh. it's just <laughs> really short and tiny. Yeah. But, but over time like the longer we do the show the more that like will evolve and change. So oh, people, that's cool. It's kind of fun. Like yeah. people every time they come to the show I think they're probably thinking that they're getting the exact same poster. But then if you skip, you know, three or four months and you show up, and you're like, oh, this is it's finally different. It's just like watching a puppy grow or something. It's just a, a real long con. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I saw uh, the – so you're in the midst of the Midwest nothingness tour? <laughs> is that correct? <laughs> well, it was really just the nothingness tour. <laughs> but this is yeah, like the Midwest segment. <laughs> and I should have called it uh, Not All at Once because some of the crowds with it being like the summer were kind of small. Um, well, from what I saw, uh, it looks like you're doing a lot of one nights, and then here, yeah. of course, is a week. Right, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, it was all just really kind of a lead up to this. I threw it together kind of last minute, and I, as usual, didn't promote it all that heavily. <laughs> and uh, just just to work on my act, just to like make sure that I had some Because, you know, two years ago when I was here, it was all the material that ended up becoming the the DVD, the animated thing. And then, and then last year, not being here... Part of it was obviously the television show. Another part was like I didn't really have enough new material to really – I don't think anyone would have cared. It's not like the exact same people come out every time. Yeah. But to come see the same act – and because of the animation, I had to really lock in on each joke and like know that they lasted roughly the same amount of time. Yeah. Try as hard as I could to like have the wording be very similar each time so that it synced up with the animation. And so then – I you know spent the last year just kind of writing this new thing and working on that. So with doing all those little one night things, I think it's I think it's now like last night's show went pretty well, and I think I'll I have it pretty much figured out for for the whole week. <laughs> Saturday we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, Saturday by that by that time I should have it figured out. By then. <laughs> um, and you said you're selling. Uh you brought those along for people if they want to buy one, or yeah, I got I brought tons of stuff. I screen printed posters just for. That's like, what I was going to ask. So there's a poster for yeah. Acme. Yeah, yeah, and I think Charlie Van Steen is going to come out and play some shows too. Like he opens like as people are filing into the room, so he doesn't take up any of the allotted performance time. But rather than just house music on the PA, like he's a really talented local musician. He just sets up his amp and plays as people come in, so you get to see a little live music really? from the local artists. Yeah, yeah, here, we did, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I did that. The last time I was here, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, it's great. Yeah, it just changes the whole mood a little bit. It feels very, it feels much more uh, communal, and it feels a lot like Minneapolis to me. And then, um, and then, yeah, I screen printed those posters, and I have like comic books. I just brought like virtually everything I had made or had laying around. <laughs> I was like, I want to get rid of this. And uh, I like, I like the poster thing. I think it's a cool, you know, CDs and DVDs are kind of a dying technology. And yeah. As much as I put like care into doing the art and stuff for them, I get it when people are like, I can get that digitally and I don't it doesn't take up space. Yeah. And, you know, fair. But a poster's kind of a you know, a more unique thing. Like it's uh, I'm a huge backer of the posters. Cool. I have two Andy Erickson posters up at my house. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did she she is she a screen printer or are they just kind of printed out? Because she I think she worked at a print shop. Yes. Or something, right? Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, she's has a background in screen printing and design. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yep. So I'm I'm rudimentary at it, but they they look okay. They're kind of cool posters. We we completely moved on from obviously. Uh, you know, Sai has walked away. He uh, had to admit himself into the ER for his back pain. <laughs> um, Squirrely neck of his. That's right. But um, I, we completely moved on from that meeting on Monday. But this I I can't be done here without mentioning the ridiculousness of something that uh, I looked up online and it was the list of all the uh, from that meeting of all the items mm-hmm. that they had to you know discuss and the variances yeah uh and this is just one i like i said i know we moved on but i can't w- go on without mentioning how ridiculous these meetings are and what they have to argue and as my kids were saying to me you know i didn't i just read it on their faces how bored they were and i leaned over at one point when we were in that thing and i said you know this is a boring for adults too <laughs> like unless it's your own thing this is yeah. your own t- topic this stuff is really boring. Here's an example. Uh, this is the uh, blah, blah, blah. D, variance to increase the maximum amount of parking on the site. Uh, recommended motion. This was one of the things that was discussed there. On I like day. that you preface it as really boring, and then are like, I'm going to add this to my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right. Approve the application to increase the maximum amount of parking on the site from 1.7 to 1.77 spaces per unit. Yeah. The different... 
Huh? <laughs> the difference between 1.7 and 1.77? Mm-hmm. So that could potentially... Uh, that's what? Two hundredths? Two hundredths, yeah. But two hundredths. Yeah, so every hundred spaces you've added two new parking spots? That's what they're... Yeah, yeah, that seems like an odd thing to gather the townspeople about. It, that's my point. Two hundredths. I, I don't know. We can move on from that. That just that's so. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Huh? Uh, what? <laughs> Aren't they already the same number? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, <sighs> I, I don't know. We can move on from that. Um, Fourth of July is coming up. Any Fourth of July plans, sir? Uh, yep, I going to Little McDonald Lake. My uh, girlfriend's family, um, li- I think they live or they have a one of the, a cabin or whatever they call it out there. They're just they seem like regular houses, but uh, everyone calls it we their call cabin. them cabins. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So her grandparents have one there, and then I think like that's funny aunt. because whenever people mention a cabin, you think people are sleeping on cots. And oh yeah, just might be running water. Yeah, probably have to pee at a you know in the outhouse. <laughs> No, there's no. people, the cabins in quotation marks are, you know, million dollar mansions Absolutely. on a lake. Yeah, because yeah. Because it's near a lake mm-hmm. and you don't live there all year round, it's a cabin. Yeah. yeah. And I think people are a little, you know, which I prefer as opposed to being ostentatious. They're very like, we're, we're humble people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little cabin. Yeah, right. Oh, that's adorable. And you go see it. Like, oh, this is, I would die to have this house. Yeah, this, this is, is amazing. nicer than anything I've ever been in. <laughs> yeah. And you only stay here part time? Yeah. Well, theirs is at least the one we've been to. They have a her aunt and uncle bought the space next door, and they have a cool spot. But the the old one that her grandparents have, it smells kind of dank and musty, like a cabin. Yeah. So it, it fits like the lake kind of environment feel, and it's fun out there, man. You go like you know no hills, but you can walk and gain fifteen feet in elevation and see fireworks from like seven other small towns. Oh, that's cool. It's really cool. Yeah. So we get eaten alive by mosquitoes but look around and see all of that and oh, right. it's really cool so i'm looking forward to that so and and in the past like the fourth has fallen on a day where like i either had to go do that and then come back and do more shows or cut the week short yeah. you know something like that but this year i get to do the full run of shows and then have a relaxing sunday and then go you know enjoy the fourth out there so yeah, nice. i'm looking forward to it i i i really like i loved nevada in the fourth of july but we're a little you know fireworks are tough and when it's that that dry in the desert you know so i suppose <laughs> like i have to be very regulated and i like i like being out here where everyone has fireworks and it's just they're going off every people are you know riding around the lake on their boats with flags flying and stuff mm-hmm. and it's weird because you get so nationalism becomes synonymous with kind of this there's like a blindness to it where you're like oh man we're just so blindly proud of something that i don't know that we've given thought to why it's so great we could do a whole nother podcast i'm sure that, yeah yeah i yeah. agree completely but i feel like when you're here and you look around it really has a feel of like everyone knows exactly why they love it and, and what they're celebrating and it doesn't feel just like blind you know six guns shooting in the air and greatest country in the world it feels a lot more like the eagle on my t-shirt's bigger than the eagle on your t-shirt <laughs> yeah, right? yeah yeah yep yeah that and i i because i'm i'm you know just traveling around for so long i'm sensitive to that you know it mm-hmm. bothers me for whatever reason and but when i when i see here i really like it and it makes me feel more connected and and nevada did as well i mean i like obviously it's pretty great to celebrate the fourth of july anywhere but you have like a bad experience at some point or you know you see like Mm -hmm. people just like oh god this is i'm disappointed or embarrassed these people are americans what do you think uh what do you think about nevada getting a professional hockey team it's strange. I mean, they've been trying to get something. I mean, we obviously it's going to be Vegas for whatever it is. I mean, and it is Vegas for the yeah. hockey thing. Uh, we, you know, we have in Reno. We we've had a number of like AAA baseball teams and the Silver Sox and couldn't ever really quite hold on to anything. And I think because we're the North and we get snow, hockey would have made more sense there. And I think. They were probably real down on any list of places to go. Yeah. The population of Las Vegas, though, isn't as big as people think it is. And it's really not growing as much as people think it is. And it's pretty miserable there in the <laughs> summer. <laughs> and it's, an, uh, it's an not enjoyable in all the ways that people think it is. Yeah. You know, if you're a resident, people love it there. And old Las Vegas is really making a comeback. But the only reason it's like that is because old Las Vegas is a lot like Reno. You know, it's not an, a theme park vibe. Yeah. You can walk across the street, you know, and it's... I don't know. I'd I'd like to defend or ho- I'd like I don't know if it would be great for Reno, but I think it'd be cool to have something like that. So 
Who knows? I, if they're competitive, that'd be real strange. Las Vegas hockey squad <laughs> <laughs> just in the middle of the desert. Yeah. <laughs> but well, I they guess won't, they, if they ever are, it's going to take a long time. Yeah, but they approved it or something recently. Oh, it's right? happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it'll they'll have that expansion process and yeah, they take a couple mm. players from every team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Phoenix stays relatively competitive, don't they? The Coyotes. Yeah, no, I, no, they're bad. Yeah, yeah. There was talk they were going to get rid of that team. Um, yeah. yeah, it just it doesn't feel right, you know mm-hmm. the, and I like the like the new stadium here for the Vikings is covered again. Yeah. I think you got to play to your environment. You got to play. Lambo is tough to go win there. They're they're saying like the, our city is is represented in our team. Like we these are the elements we live in. Yeah. Granted, we don't practice in them every day, but we're more familiar with them than you are. We walk out to our cars and have to deal with how cold this is. I actually when when we're uh, we'll wrap this up real quick here. But when I le- when I leave here, that's where I'm heading next is to the new Viking Stadium. Oh, sweet. I'm gonna work- Are you going to be a vendor? Yeah, awesome. I'm going to work there. Cool, like man. I've worked. Yeah, I was going to ask Viking you when you were sitting out there. Games for years. Yeah, yeah. you told me. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, the last two seasons, I don't know if you know, but they play the Vikings have been playing at TCF Bank Stadium. Yeah, did you on work those? University of Minnesota campus, and I sure did. <sighs> I, did you freeze your face I, off? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> But you know what? I wear it with a badge of honor that I worked when the wind chill was below zero. Yeah. And I showed up and I parked for free. I parked like almost a mile away and hoofed all the way to the stadium that worked on the game. And yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. I had, you know, hand warmers in my, you know, in my gloves, and mm-hmm. multiple layers. And, and you're moving around. I you're bet moving the around. difficulty is sweating. You don't want to sweat when you're Correct. doing that. I bet I was warmer than the people, you know, sitting there on the cold benches. Absolutely. But uh, I, you know, people still showed up to the games. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, I used to think before, growing up being a Vikings fan, and they played in the Metrodome indoor, and I worked there, that's what I was comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And I always thought, ah, oh, you know what, all these guys that go and oh, the good old days, the Vikes in the, at the Met Stadium in the 70s, and we tailgated and it was cold and we could see our breath and the mm-hmm. beer froze. And I thought, oh, you guys are just, this is just, you know, nostalgia. But you know what? It's legit. Outdoors yeah. better. Yeah. So, it, yeah. And I don't know why. You know, you sign up for a race or something like that, and then you start going, oh, God. My, and I, I don't do this personally, but my mom's a big, like, 5K fan, or she'll mm. do these little mud runs and stuff. And it seems to be a bit of the 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 whole process is looking at it and going, oh, how are we going to do this? And humans like that. Like, yeah. you remember those moments more. Absolutely. Like I, I did this little punk rock club in Wichita, and the air conditioner was really loud. And I was like, can we turn that off? And everyone was like, dude, it's a summer. No. And I was like, if we're sweaty and uncomfortable, we'll remember that. You don't, I mean, how many things do you remember just sitting there very pleasantly? It just goes by like you're watching TV. Right. But when you go out to a sweaty punk rock club and watch music, you leave there like your ears ringing, your shirt's all wet. And you're like, oh, this was great. You leave a football game cold, you know, a little bit buzzed from having a few beers. And you go like, oh, that, this is what I'll remember. My body will remember these feels for the rest of my life. Like Absolutely. It, that same the same stadium over the U of University of Minnesota campus is the the site of one of my most memorable uh one of the most memorable concerts I've ever attended. Mm-hmm. U2. It was uh they were supposed to play one summer uh Bono had what did he have a bad back or something so they uh-huh. had to cancel everything. They brought it back the next year and it rained. It started raining in the middle of the show and I mean pretty hard. Yeah. And it's out, you know, obviously outdoors everybody's getting soaked. Bono started singing like rain, rain. It was beautiful. Oh, it was great. Uh, I have a recording, like a bootleg recording of that yeah. show, and it gives me chills when it gets <laughs> to that part. It's so freaking you good. Those. You and need the rain those. is because of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The environment, this this club being in this low ceiling, you know, kind of basement environment, mm-hmm. it feels like you're. That's where comedy was invented to yep. be. We we snuggle up in places and share our thoughts, and yep. that is so foreign now as humans. Everything is digital. We're only communicating with each other that way. There are very few places where we go out and interact mm-hmm. publicly with one another. If we're all jumping up and down at a music venue, it's not the same as like laughing or not laughing in the same area. I Completely. mean, it's just... Oh, it's frustrating. Completely. That is the good thing uh, to tie it all together here, that, uh, you know, if... If Acme moves, you know, it's not going to close. Acme will exist. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know for sure that Lewis and everybody here that loves comedy as much as I do, as much as you do, that, you know, I'm fully uh, 
behind the fact that they're going to make the right decision in finding a new spot or if mm-hmm. they have to build something new that we're all going to be crazy about how great the new design is. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, people that work here, people that come here all the time, you know what makes this place so great. It isn't a lot of it has to do with the people that come and perform here, but it's mm-hmm. also the crowds. It's also this low ceiling. It's the staff and how well they get along. It's the staff. Absolutely. It's these stone walls. It's everything that all fits together here to make this place what it is. So mm-hmm. I, what people can do now is keep coming here and supporting and bringing new people. Yeah. Yeah. Join the mailing list and uh, make sure you're up to speed on when they do announce where the next place will be. And Exactly. Stay with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the, the families stand together, which is great. And that's yeah. all you need. The house is irrelevant. Mm-hmm. So that makes it easier to swallow. It's difficult. It's like moving out of a house or something like that. Like, but we all grew up here. Yeah, what about all the marks on the wall? Like, <laughs> yeah. My birthday. Yeah. 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 yeah, we'll go to a new house. It'll be just as good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. People cool. should come out and see Thanks, you. Justin. Uh, continued success, sir. And, Appreciate uh, it. Everyone, another one of my selling points, by the way, of Acme, and I say this as much as possible, is that the um, per, for your dollar, it's some of the best value of entertainment. Yeah. I mean, it, completely. Compare it to a movie ticket, a concert ticket, especially a concert ticket. Yeah. Uh, the Acme prices are totally reasonable. Absolutely. Uh, but my my tip is to bring a few extra bucks and you can get one of David's uh, <laughs> CDs or posters. Get some merch. They've uh-huh. got good beers on tap here. Great it's, beers on tap. Yeah. It's yeah. Worth, worth coming. All right. All right. Thanks, Justin. Thank you. Bam.